What's up, family? Man, I want to have a real heart-to-heart -heart with you guys today. Man, I love you guys. I do. And I say that because, you know what? So often we hear so much negative crap going on in the world. You know, so often we hear so much turmoil and just chaos and just drama and just trauma everywhere. You know what I mean? It's like, man, that's all that's in the world is just negativity. But that's not true, family, at all. You know what I mean? Man, there's a lot of love in this world. There's a lot of beauty in this world. We just don't see it for the most part because we're on that low frequency of seeing the negative. You know what I mean? We see what we are. We see what we are and you guys got to catch that. If all you see in this world is chaos and trauma and pain and suffering because that's the frequency you are on. That's the vibration you live on. So that's what you see. You have to learn how to change your frequency. So many people want love and, you know, they want to see the beauty in the world. And how can you see the beauty in the world when all this? Man, I've gone through a lot of crazy shit. I've gone through a lot of trauma. It's not easy healing. It's not easy acknowledging the fact that, man, I got to grow the fuck up. It's not easy understanding, damn, I was fucked up emotionally. I was fucked up intellectually. I was fucked up spiritually, energetically. I was an emotional fucking wreck. Why? Because that's the energy I was on. I was on that victim mentality. That negative, toxic, woe is me, and the world is fucked up, and whoop the whoop the whoop, and I got to get all my fucking guns, get all my ammo, and da da da. I had all that stupid ass shit. Because that was the frequency I was on. I thought I was being super smart. I thought I was being fucking woke. And what got that show me is, nah, hey, <laughs> you just negative as fuck. You're negative as hell, and you have a negative frequency. You're in a negative vibration. That's why you think the way you think, Elijah. Healing isn't attractive at all. It's an ugly process. It's a painful process. And oftentimes, it can be a very lonely process. Lonely as fuck. Confusing as fuck. But it's necessary. It's necessary. You have to go through the stages in order to become, go from being broken, frustrated, and toxic, and negative. You got to go through the process, the healing process, and it's ugly as fuck. You got to go through all the different stages in order to heal. There are no shortcuts to this shit. There is no, okay, I'm just going to accept Jesus Christ as my Lord and personal Savior. Now, boom, I'm healed. You know what I mean? I ain't got to deal with being molested or raped and seeing my father do what to do or whatever the fuck it is that you've gone through. You can't just set this, this Savior from outer space or whatever the fuck you want to call it. And boom, you're magically saved and you're, you're complete and you're whole now. That's not how life fucking works. And I know that's going to be offensive to some people. And it is what it is. You know what I mean? I'm not here to be offensive to anyone. I'm here to wake us the fuck up. Just to share information so that you can come to this understanding. Damn, I got to grow the fuck up. Damn, I thought I knew this shit. You can't accept Jesus, Joshua, the Messiah, whatever it is you want to call him, it, or whatever. You can't accept a being into your life and boom, you're magically saved and you resolved and healed and moved on from all your fucking pain and suffering. You got to go through the fucking work. Jesus isn't going to do the job for you. Buddha can't do the job for you. Allah, Krishna, whoever it is you believe in, whatever it is you believe in, is not going to do the work for you. You're going to have to grow the fuck up, man up, 
warm it up and do your own fucking work. You're going to have to heal your motherfucking self. You're going to have to understand the fucking pain and the trauma that you're carrying and that you've been carrying. You can't get around that and not be healed. You know what I mean? You got to go through the process and it's ugly and painful and lonely as fuck. And so many of us, we care so much about what other people see and what other people think about us. We don't want them to see us fucked up like that. We don't want them to see us going through some shit. We don't want them to know we're on the verge of having nervous breakdowns. We don't want them to know that we sit in our bed and sometimes we just bawl and cry and curl up in a fetal position holding our stomach in agonizing pain and frustration and confusion and suffering. We don't want people to know we do that shit. Some of us, we try to hide that shit by drinking and smoking. Some of us try to hide the pain and the suffering and all that other shit by being stuck on social media. Or being distracted with TV and movies. And so we never really heal. Because the only way to heal is, I gotta face this shit. I gotta deal with this shit. I can't just quote scriptures to it. I can't just quote Buddha to this stuff and it's just going to go away. No, I'm going to have to sit my ass here for however long it take and work this shit out. Come to grips with this. Understand this. Learn from this so that I can heal from this. So that I could get the wisdom and the knowledge and the understanding and the insight that I was supposed to get. So we got to grow up. We got to understand that, man, there's a method to the madness. There's always a method to the madness. There's a method to God's chaos. There's a method to God's, you know, dysfunction, if you want to call it that. What looks like dysfunction. What looks like chaos and turmoil and hell. There's a method to that. There's a reason for that. There's a reason why the world looks the way it do to you. And it ain't got shit to do with God. It has everything to do with you. Everything to do with you. And how you see the world. What lenses are you looking through? Are you looking through your pain and your suffering? And that's why I saw you see his pain and suffering. Have you put in the work to heal? And so you see the place, see the world as a loving, beautiful place? Because that's the frequency you vibrate on? You understand I understand that there's a whole lot of people suffering in the world. I can't do anything about that. There was people suffering in the world when Buddha walked this planet. He didn't do anything about that. There was people suffering when Jesus Christ, the Yeshua, Yeshua the Messiah, walked this planet. He didn't stop the people from suffering. What makes you think that's your responsibility? That's a distraction. We have to grow up. Yes, there's all of that going on in the world. There's wars and rumors of wars going on in the world. Death happening every fucking day. But every day, somebody's been born. Every day, 
nature is still beautiful. Every day, the water is still beautiful. Every day, the sunsets and the sunrises are still beautiful. What am I saying? Why am I talking about that? Because it's a matter of what you focus on. What do you choose to put your attention to? So many of us, our focus isn't on healing. Our focus is on all the negative, toxic crap in the world. Our focus is, why is there so much hatred in the world? Why is there so much racism in the world? Why is there so much murder in the world? Why is there so much drug abuse in the world? Why is there so much pornography in the world? Why is there so much sexuality in the world? We got all this negative, toxic ass shit that we focus on. And that's the energy that you vibrate on. Because that's who you are. That's energetically who you are. We have to grow up. It's a trip. When you look in the Bible, I know that everybody's not into the Bible, but in the Bible, in Genesis, the devil is this, this harmless snake, this little serpent. In Genesis, in the beginning, he's a snake. A little tiny snake. At the end of the book, in Revelations, he's no longer a little snake. In Revelations, he's this big fucking dragon. If memory serves me correctly, ten heads. A big ass fucking dragon. with at least 10 heads. I believe it's 10 or 12, but I believe it's 10. And so that's always fascinated me. And so, one day I was talking to God about that. How did the devil, Satan, Lucifer, whatever the fuck you want to call him, how did he go from a little tiny serpent to this full-blown fucking dragon with 10 motherfucking heads. How did he get that fucking big? And God took me back to, um, I'm part Native American. On my dad's side, I'm black. I'm, excuse me, my dad's side, I'm Cherokee. On my mom's side, I'm Blackfoot. Um, and what God had to show me, part of our Navy culture, there's a story that's passed down. The little boy's walking with his grandpa, and he asked his grandpa, Grandpa, inside of me, I'm part wolf and I'm part bear. And grandpa's like, yeah, you are. He said, well, who will I be? When I grow up, will I be the wolf? Or would I be the bear? And Grandpa looks at him and says, whichever one you feed. If you feed the negative, you're going to be negative. If you feed the positive, the loving, the nurturing, that's what you're going to be. Wherever you send your energy, whatever you focus your energy on, is the frequency you vibrate on. It's what you become. Let me say it again. Energy flows where your attention goes. Did you catch that? Did you catch that? Energy flows where your attention goes. Wherever your attention is at, that's where your energy goes. Where are you putting your attention at? I'm going back to the devil thing in a second. You gotta catch that because in the beginning of the Bible, in the beginning of the book, he's a little, he's a little snake. At the end of the book, 
He's this huge ass fucking ten headed monster. This huge dragon. How did he get that fucking big? How did he get that fucking powerful? People's energy. People's energy. He got bigger because more people was feeding into the bullshit. More people's feeding into the negativity. That low frequency bullshit. We look at the world and we look and say, man, the world is chaotic and the world is whoop de doo. And all we think about, all we put out into the universe is how toxic, how fucked up humanity is. How fucked up these raggedy ass women are. How fucked up these lazy, sorry ass guys are. And we say all this stupid, ignorant ass shit, not understanding that we're putting this shit out into the atmosphere. Not understanding that we're feeding the beast. You're feeding that negativity. You're feeding it. So it's going to get bigger. It's going to get more powerful. Because you're feeding it. I was watching the game. Um, San Francisco and Detroit yesterday. And um, it took me back to um, my late wife Cecilia. Her father was a... Um, Cowboys fan, and he never got a chance to go to um, the Cowboys game in Texas, um, and so we took him to a San Francisco Cowboy game, and um, only football game he ever been to in his life, and I was smiling as we was sitting, and I'm just remembering it, just going back down memory lane of just a smile of Cecilia's brother and dad. As we pulled up to um, the stadium, they were a candlestick at the time. It was just a smile on their face. Die hard cowboy fans, but never been to the game. Stay with me, I'm going somewhere. And so, as we're walking to the stadium from the parking lot, you could hear people, you know, the loud, the, the, the noise. The game hadn't started yet, but people was like amped up. The energy in the place was contagious. Stay with me, I'm going somewhere. And so looking at them, I love people watching. So I'm looking at them and just a smile on their face. And they're just like, they're in heaven. This is the best day of their life. They're in heaven. Because they're watching their cowboys. Not on home, not on TV at home. But in person. I'm not a cowboy fan. I ain't never been a cowboy fan. Can't stand the cowboys. I call them cowgirls. Because that's how they fans act, like a little bunch of babies. And so anyways, um, the energy that they had, the smile that was on their face, you could see their aura was glowing. It was still talking about energy. Stay with me. And so as we got into the stadium, and as the game was going on, as the 49ers were scoring it, you know, they were winning, you could hear the stadium just erupting and just noise and just... The energy, you can actually feel the energy. Of all the 49er fans cheering and screaming and rooting on their team. And so I'm sitting back and I'm feeling the energy. I can sense the energy. And I'm tripping on it, right? And I'm looking at my father-in-law and my brother-in-law and they're sitting there not saying anything, not doing anything. Because their team was losing. But then their team started coming back and ended up winning the game. And their glow came back and they're cheesing and smiling and just like, man, it was the best thing in their life. The best experience for them. And so as we're walking out the stadium, man, they're not wanting to make any noise and not say anything because the stadium's full of a bunch of 49er fans. Full of, uh, some Cowboy fans too, but nowhere near as many 49er fans. And the Niner fans were mad and cussing because this is a playoff game. And they were cussing and pissed and whoop, whoop, whoop. And 
their team lost. And the Cowboys won. But it was the energy. It was the energy. And so as I'm watching the game on TV yesterday, and the 49ers were getting blown out by Detroit, it reminded me of at the end of this game, of the Cowboy Niner game, when the Niners lost. How quiet, how mad the Niner fans were. But as they started winning yesterday on TV, and you could hear the Niner fans erupting and cheering in the stadium, being ignited, man, you could see and feel the energy. All those people rooting on their team. They were focused on their team. That's where their energy was going. That's where their energy went. Where does your energy go on a normal day? Where do you place your energy? Who do you give your energy to? Why do you give your energy there? For me, I've, I've had to learn, man, I can't give everybody my energy. Can't do it. Won't do it. And it don't matter what they say and, and people try to hype you up or people try to bait you into some shit, into a fucking argument or to an ignorant ass conversation with their stupid ass posts. You know what I mean? To bait you in just so you could give them their fucking energy. Just so that they could have your time. Your energy. Everybody don't deserve your energy. Every situation doesn't deserve your energy. And so as I've been cutting back and pulling back my energy. I don't give it out to everybody anymore. And it's not that. I'm trying to save it or anything else of that nature. I'm not feeding into the negativity. I'm not feeding into the bullshit. I'm not. Healing requires you to face your fucking fears. Healing requires you to face your fucking shit. You got to focus on that. You got to understand that. You got to learn to forgive yourself. You got to learn to forgive other people. You got to learn to let go. And the trick is, it's easy to let go when you've healed. You can't let go until you heal. So many of you are trying to let go, but you ain't even healed. So many of you are trying to let go of shit you never even came to a fucking conclusion or resolution on. You don't even understand the fucking reason why you had to go through what you went through. You never even gained the fucking lesson. You can't let that go. You can't let it go because you're still energetically connected to it. And you're going to stay energetically connected to it until you learn to leave a reason. Until you grow through it. It is what it is. We have to grow up. We have to grow. Man. Man. I hope and pray that I said something to encourage you, to inspire you, to even challenge your way of thinking. If you're interested in a mentoring or coaching session, man, reach out to me at ElijahAmi at gmail.com. The information's in the description. I love you guys. Happy healing. Peace.